Hello everyone, I'm just back from a two Dolomites landscape photography workshops. I spent two weeks with two fantastic groups photographing some of the most outstanding peaks in the north of Italy. Recently, uh, last week actually, I had the chance to try and test a new Fujifilm lens for the X system and I'm talking about the XF 16-80mm f4 zoom lens. The lens is a very solid product, uh, it really is a very nicely made lens, just like all the newer Fujifilm XF lineup lenses are. The lens uh, feels pro, although it's not a red label lens which Fujifilm uses for its top of the lines lenses, it definitely, definitely feels like it. You can notice the small dimensions and as you can probably see the lens is not a big lens. It's lightweight, so nothing here that will strain your back uh, too much. Uh, the focusing ring moves really smoothly. The zoom function is external, meaning that the bottle will extrude when you zoom in to 80 mm. It's quite firm, so it does not accidentally extrude when you have it slung around your body for a day's work. The lens is also weather sealed, so shooting the dust, sand, and rain is not an issue at all. Usually, um, don't need a super fast focus performance from a lens, but it's super, super fast and precise, especially on the new cameras like the X-T3 or X-T30. No hunting, even in lower light condition. I tried mainly on my X-T30, but also on my X-T2, and on both cameras focus was flawless. Let's talk for a moment about some specs. The 1680 f4 is a fast and silent lens with a, an excellent image quality. But just how good is it? Uh, how does it compare to the professional 1655 2.8? And my question is, for a landscape photographer or traveler, could you potentially save yourself size, some money and weight if you don't need the f2.8 aperture? In my opinion, yes. The weight, 440 grams for the 1680, compared to the 655 grams of the 1655, almost an extra 200 grams, fairly significant. Then external dimensions, uh, the 1655, as you can see, is slightly bigger. So the 1680, I find, is actually a better fit in terms of size and weight, for almost the X-series cameras and the dimensions are very similar to the lovely 1024F4. The equivalent focal length range is wider for the 1680mm, so from 24mm to 122mm, compared to the 1655 which goes from 24 to 84mm. Uh, the filter size, it uses the 72mm filter size, which is a bit smaller than the 77mm of the 1655. It's weather sealed, the aperture is fixed uh, at f4 uh, compared to the 2.8 of the 1655. And then the big plus for the new uh, 1680 is the optical image stabilizer. The optical image stabilizer is the real showstopper with this lens. According to Fujifilm, the lens has image stabilization of up to six stops, a lot. No switch to turn the stabilizer on and off because the XF1680 OIS is clear enough to only work when needed. The OIS actually detects when you put the camera on the tripod and adjusts accordingly. Very nice features to have. Obviously, since this is not a red badge lens nor a prime lens, you will not get the same performances as with those two types of lenses. However, this lens did surprise me quite a lot. Sharpness is very good too. It resolves perfectly and fits all the resolution needed for the X-Series APS-C sensors. I didn't notice any vignetting or neither the wide end or the far end, but to be honest, I didn't test it for it in particular. In a second, we will have to look a little deeper into image quality to see if there really is a large difference between the two lenses. However, 
if I'm completely honest, there is not a night and day distinction that would make one a significantly better choice than the other. Let's take a closer look. The 1680 is almost uh, indistinguishable from the 1655 in terms of contrast and sharpness. In the center, uh, the corners are still a little softer. From f5.6 to f8, there seems to be a slight advantage in the 1655 lens, but it's not going to be noticeable until you start to pixel peeping. Applying a little bit of sharpening capture one and the final quality and the detail will be excellent. Usually I use my lenses at the sweet spot of f8 where I have the optimal quality on sharpness without any issue with the diffraction. At f11 diffraction starts to kick in for both lenses. The distortion is well controlled. There is some at 16, 21 millimeters and it gets better as you move up the focal length. Anyway, the distortion is correct automatically once you import the file in Lightroom or Capture One. I can't notice any difference on the less distortion compared with the red label 1655, it's pretty much the same. Conclusions, definitely, I really enjoy to use this lens on the field. It's a phenomenal lens. Well built and the OIS is absolutely fantastic. The focal range, in my opinion, is the perfect balance for people like me who love to shoot in the mountains and like to keep the backpack lightweight. Of course, the largest market is clearly the travel photographer who doesn't want or can't change the lenses all the time. So far, I'm really liking this lens. It's versatile, small and the image quality is brilliant for its price point. I had the feeling that this lens will replace my 1655 shortly. All right, guys, that's it. That's pretty much all I want to talk. If you like this video, please click on the thumbs up button below. Leave a comment to let me know what you think about it. Share this video and if you are the first time on my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. Okay, guys, thanks so much and see you next time. Ciao.